This is Buzz. I'm this is Larry. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> we know better. <laughs> so we're going to do a table saw. Cart. The cart was designed and modified from the original idea out of Woodsmith. Rob said it was designed in a SketchUp by Bob. Buzz and I are going to do the demonstration and additional comments most likely will be made by Rob. <laughs> and there is an asterisk here and it says, if you can't see it, another Rob shop project with free labor. <laughs> so here we go with credits. The design idea was by Bob, Bob Brokaw. Bob. Uh, inspiration for Woodsmith Magazine. Here's the volume and the page numbers if you want to look at it. That's is Bob. what Rob right now has a, a small cart with wire baskets that's just loaded with stuff. See, these are the people who are doing it. Yeah. We'll see a picture of that later. Yeah. But basically, it's to hold this kind of stuff. Most of you have probably seen a table saw there in your own shop, somebody else's shop, <coughs> with this space underneath that is less than optimally utilized, generally piled with a bunch of overflow things. <laughs> so uh, we have had this uh, ugly ass cart that uh, Buzz referred to. Hey, you made it. <coughs> <laughs> yep, I made it out of surplus stuff that I found here and there. We decided it was time to upgrade this thing, especially after uh, Larry and Rob found this thing in Wood Magazine, or Wood Shop. So at any rate, we determined the amount of space involved, and which turned out to be 36 wide, 28 high, and 24 deep. So the idea was to take advantage of as much of the cube as possible. The approach to the thing was use plywood for most of the carcass, and then because Larry had al already made a, uh, a device to go by the wool press uh, involving the use of skate wheels side mounted to the to the box, we decided well that that gets the uh, lowers the center of gravity substantially, gives you a few extra inches you know that would ordinarily be taken up by a caster mechanism underneath and. This thing was going to be sizable enough. I was concerned about, you know, caster swing underneath and this thing possibly getting tipsy. So it didn't take much convincing for me to steal Larry's idea there about the caster wheels. So with that, we'll go to the next line. That's so here are some materials that we used. We used three quarter inch plywood. <coughs> we had this is the same wood over here, right, Larry, that we use? If you could hold that up. This is either called uh, pecan, pecan or um, hickory. Depends on when you cut the tree down, what the tree had nuts on it or not. They are different trees. <laughs> but they, they um, Swan Lumber called it pecan. So this is what we used. I basically took a 4 by 8 sheet, maybe a little bit more. But you'll see later on, it, it looks nice when you finish it. It looks a lot better than regular plywood. Then we used our half inch plywood as for the back and the drawer bottoms. Another sheet for that. We used three quarter inch maple for trim and door drawers. And we used a wheel fenders that we were just talking about those wheels. We used a piece of maple for that that's a little bit thicker, three and a half tall by 24 inches long. It's an inch and three quarters wide to fit their wheel in there, which you'll see later. Self-closing drawer slides, six of them, and four each roller blade wheels. Now, you can go to Goodwill or something or use sports store and get those. You don't have to buy them brand new. Once they're in there, nobody will ever see them again. Hey, Buzz? Yes, sir. Why roller blade wheels rather than casters? Good point. Well, for one thing, what he just talked about, the question was why not the casters, but 
If you have the casters, they're going to be underneath. Or you could put them on the side. Or you could buy casters and take the wheel out of it and use the wheel and not the caster. Right, but case. here we're talking about a, a cabinet that's going to be underneath the table saw, which most of the time it's going to be underneath the table saw. You don't need to roll it out. It's not a tool. You just open the drawers, get whatever you need. But when you do roll it out, it comes straight out. And it goes straight back in. And it's beautiful. It, you'll see later, it rolls good. And almost too good. So from Bob's work in SketchUp, we came up with a uh, cut sheet, a cut, um, cut out plan. Uh, this is the uh, mill work. This is the flat work. And here's the build materials. I'm not going to stay on that, but taking his cut sheet, we, this is the whole build materials for everything. And then here are the tools we use. Track saw, table saw, drill press, the Makita uh, minor saw with a really nice stand underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Another one of them free labor projects. <laughs> um, router table, and we used some, some bit, this box in bit here, and a uh, uh, spiral bit, and then a slot cutting bit. So, um, then material, this is the list of what we're going to go through while we're here. Cutting plywood, trimming plywood, cutting drawer stock, making wheel wells, routing, spending down, to, and drawer locking, you know, joints. So, here we start. So, you know, with three quarter inch plywood or four by eight sheet, it takes two or three guys to run that through a table saw unless you set up all the little things, but still to hold it good, you need three guys. But with this, you're putting that track on the board and cutting it. And this is the Makita track saw. The advantage of this saw has a stop, a stop uh, cut at an eighth of an inch, which gives yep. you a, a scoring line. Mm -hmm. We score the plywood first to get, so we want to have the little fuzzies and um, breaks in the plywood and then we came back and cut it. So obviously safety wise you have to put it on your saw horses and we have two by fours underneath it this way so and you can set the blade so you're not over cutting. Now once you got the long pieces cut then we could cut it on the table saw. It's more controllable then. So these are all our pieces. The sides, the top and the bottom. You're only got four main pieces there. Good Lord, I looked rough that morning, didn't I? So from there we go to, um, we've got the rough cut pieces cut. We're gonna to go to the router, my favorite tool, and um, do them. And these cuts will consist of, we put a slot in here and here, or a spline. same time that should mean that they line up perfectly so so we're, we're making this cut these cuts and we're cutting uh, trim pieces and that's obviously to hide your plywood edge which you're not going to see now this is the, the spline bit we used it's just a router with a slot this was in this case it was an eight in, eighth an inch <coughs> spline where we ran it through the router Notice I'm using a uh, uh, safety push. Just to keep your fingers three inches away from the blade. We try to do that, but sometimes, you know. We and also we're using a um, feather board to keep it pushed up tight against the blade. It's like and then after we've cut all the trim, we can go and run using the same blade at the same level to cut the plywood. And then here is Buzz cutting our splines on the table saw. Rob also was a big assistant in cutting splines. These need to be, I've got an eight inch slot. What size should the spline be? Very close to, just under that. Eighth of an inch. So we cut it an eighth of an inch and ran it through the drum sander to reduce it just enough so it, it flows smoothly. Now the problem with doing that is 
you now have some movement in your in your trim and when you glue it up you have to make sure that both sides are flush otherwise you're going to have a high and a low side so we we made made, made that note in gluing it up and looking back i think of a better way to do it is make this piece an inch put it in and then run a router around the outside to flush it because when sanding this and you're trying to get to flush you have a tendency to over sand and the plywood is not very thick veneer <laughs> and you have some spots where you sand right through the plywood. How do you know that? Uh, we'll show you some examples of that later and then to cut these pieces these were this is basically a picture frame so we we have a little jig we used on the uh, table saw to cut 45s and get them close enough so they they fit top and then this is gluing it up and uh, minor the corners and glue that's what this is here an example minor corners and gluing and their splines cut this way so that you can put the edging on and then we're going to attach the top with a spline and this spline is for attaching the top and I'll pass that around. We had originally thought about using Craig's screws on this project but we figured that was under your skill level. We wanted to up yeah. the game. Everything about dominoes? There is dominoes in this project. Yes, there is. Keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, the designer objected to the Craig screws. Uh, here you can see the, the spines. The top piece lines uh, only got trim on the side because it was going to connect into the end pieces. And here we also ran a dado around the outside of everything so we could insert the back later. And then everything got sanded. And um, as I discussed, there was a problem with the, the spline system in that they didn't quite line up and I had some overlap either on the front or the back and not necessarily in the same spot on each board. So there is a better way to do that. And if you note, this elaborate hose holding tool here, right here, which is basically a clamp of a clamp of a clamp, <laughs> just to keep the hose off the, the top. And then everything moved to our stainer with much disdain, we did a good job. It was uh, stained with Minwax Golden Pecan 245 as a number, and then it was sanded and sealed with lacquer. Okay, so here's all our assembly parts. Top, bottom, back, two sides, splines, trim, bottom, and then our wheels, our fenders and wheels. That's the exploded view of it. Looks simple, doesn't it? We always think that. Our goal was to finish this last Friday. Here's the exploded view of our drawers. Notice like Larry said, everything's got a dado. The sides, the back, the front, and there's a center divider in each drawer. And there is where our domino is. Right there, and in the back of that. So one drawer all the way across it, rather than two drawers. Yes. Yep. The uh, theory behind that was that you know one one drawer mechanism would save you at least an inch in drawer slide material, but to make up the difference in the strength of the drawers, that winds up being almost 36 inch wide drawer. That was why we put the center divider in there, and then the the uh, drawer bottom is in actually in two halves, so the two halves join together at that divider, and the divider keeps the uh, keeps the migration between the two sides minimum. So to get the drawer assembly, next slide. Yeah, this was all rough lumber, so we had to square it up, of course, and then rough cut all our dimensions out. Uh, I wish I could tell you exactly how many board feet we used, but we, for the most part, we were using one by maple. It was like one by ten pieces, eight or ten. So this is what we're working toward. These are the drawers. That's my wheel chalk, Larry. Right, well, that's all right. It almost rolls too well. 
say you don't want it roll when you pull the drawer out? Yes. Yeah. So there should be some sort of locking mechanism? Yeah. We're going to, actually I had two washers the other day in there that tightened the wheels up so they didn't spin quite so well and it was working fine. It was still rolling good, but not too good. But you can see how when you pull that out from under your table now, it's going to come straight out. Because the only reason you're going to pull it out is to sweep or vacuum underneath it or around it. You don't really need to pull it out. Okay, here's our drawers. They're all assembled. Larry's pulling one out over there. So your domino basically is right down there and then the other end. Because it was just too hard to put a dado in there and try to get everything to go together. It was hard enough to get all that at the same time and get it clamped. To cut the drawers, we used a uh, box, uh, box joint. Bit. This is for, for we have a uh, block for setting it up, and the way you cut on this bit, you cut two cuts. The sides are cut into the end, and the backs are cut this way. So you run this through the router this way, and then you uh, run it this way, and then doing it vertically. Presented the challenge, so Buzz gave me this nice. Those are for Alex, right? Block. The checks. Some for me, some for okay. me. Okay. Hose this vertical, and that runs right straight through the bit. And we did this on here, 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 and here. And you can look and see how these interlock. Now, before you ask, What's the question you're going to ask us? Why didn't Why didn't you dovetail? We do lots of dovetails. We like to do things a little different once in a while, so we thought we'd try this. And here we are running through the router. Okay. Uh-oh. Excuse me. Now the front of the drawer. has this handle, so you can grab it, and this was done with this, oh no, it's a template, <laughs> so yeah, we cut this template out so they all be the same, we double face tape and staple that to that, use the drill press to drill, this is a one inch hole, so we drill seven eighths inch hose in here and then cleaned it up on the router with the uh, spiral. With this spiral bit. And that makes them all consistently the same. If you have a little template here, I'll pass that around. Larry, before we get away from the drawers, I'd like you to show these guys because Larry's always making stuff like this. He's very safe. I, I, did I want you to, did you show him how you put the yeah. vertical piece through there? But with the push stick and everything, he had, you had something over here too, uh, flat. But he's, he pushes that so it's holding it against the fence <coughs> and his fingers are way away from it. On this picture you can also see where we put the, uh, uh, dado, that's the dado, right, along the, the back of the door, or all around this area. This has got a double data on it, so this board fits in tight. The bottom is three quarter inch. These are rated at 100 pounds. I'm sure the drawer would actually hold up more with like a half inch piece of plywood in the bottom than 100 pounds. And we had a unique issue with the front. You can see this cut is actually deeper. Can you see that? Can you see that? Very good. Yeah. This cut is actually deeper than this one, so that we can uh, offset the uh, door hinges. And then that means they're hidden. 
single pass. The, the problem with this particular fence is adjustment is not very easy. If I knew my final would stop and had a way to fix that, I could do that multiple passes at one time. Now, if we had a what's the other one? Not the issue, increase. If you had an increase system with uh, fixed points, you could do that. But this worked out fine. And you saw, you, you can see the dot. You can't see anything now, can you? And of course, you can see this is where we cut the domino. This is one side of the drawer, and that's the, the spine down the center. And there's the hole for the domino, and there's the domino. Rob did a very good job cutting that for us. Unfortunately, our, our Finnish guy finished the pencil mark. Oh, yes. If you're doing quality <laughs> furniture, you should erase the pencil marks before you uh, stain and um, <laughs> lacquer. Otherwise, if you're a permanent. That was an inside. This is that type of deal. But <laughs> the, the system works great. Unfortunately, we didn't bring a wheel in because they're all mounted on there. The, those roller blade wheels were you know, at least three and a half inches in diameter, if not more. So what we had to do is we, we didn't have a big enough Forstner bit to do that. We had originally made the fender But then we found out it wasn't quite tall enough to get the bolt through the side to where it needed to be. So we had to add a piece of maple to the bottom, but it blended in with the rest of the trim, so it's all good. You can see this addition here? Yeah, to make that a little bit taller. The trim. And if you look at the side, all the, all the corners are minored. So anyway, we didn't have a big enough Forstner bit, and we didn't feel like paying for one, so we had to get tricky. So Rob had a big enough hole saw, so we carefully laid out where the center was going to be and used the hole saw first and went down into about an inch into the wood for the thickness of the wheels. And once we had that done, then we used the Forstner bit, the biggest one we had, to drill down again. And we ended up with that. Because once you, once you made that cut, all we had to do was, you know, hit it with a hammer a few times and chisel popped it right out of there. So this is what the looks like the final product? Yep. Now we found out, you know, because you always find out things, we had bolts that weren't quite long enough and then I went and got some longer ones but they were too long so we actually had to do the Dremel cut the end of the bolt off so we could get that bottom drawer in. Now we're putting the drawer slides in. You can almost see that bolt problem right there. That's before we cut them. But when we went to put the drawer in we said what's it hitting? And then we said uh oh it's hitting the end of that bolt. We had to take it all apart again. Cut the bolts off of the Dremel. Take it now and everything's fine. So we're now putting drawer slides in. And to put the first drawer slide in, we simply use a spacer. You can see the spacers there. Um, one inch piece of wood and then three quarter inch at the right height. Yeah, we had these trick things, but we couldn't use those because of that bolt sticking out. So we just had to use the two pieces of wood for the bottom drawer slide. Now you'll notice uh, on there, a, a note in blue. That's a uh, again an editorial comment from the designer, whereby I was used to on side mount drawer slides, like KV and various other manufacturers like that. <coughs> Most drawer slides that I have ever encountered, you know, the side mounts like that are you, you allow for a half inch, you add an additional sixteenth for clearance, and uh, everything is usually good except for. We got these on the one of the discount tables. Yeah, well, these our, are 20 lumber standards, but you know. yeah, they were one of the economy drawer slides, and they were probably three thirty seconds more than a than a half inch. <laughs> Which meant all Bob's great work in SketchUp was under oversized, so we had to go back to the drawers. 
and the drawer slots were not consistent with what Bob had calculated as drawing. Which meant I had to take this board and plane it down so the drawer slides is drawn. Now in the process of planing, you think you've got it, and then we put the drawer slots in and realize the planer really likes to take wood off and maybe it took more than it was supposed to. <laughs> so now, so, if, if we had mounted the drawer slides on the, the unassembled stock, we wouldn't have known that when we had to take them off and do it again. So, to make up for that, if you look closely, you won't see it. There's a washer behind each drawer slide mounted on the cabinet to extend it back out so the drawer would flow smoothly. This is the way drawer installation goes, I hate to tell you, but... We, we originally found out when we built the drawers, what Larry's talking about, that side was too thick because we put the drawer in there and then I took the drawer side and just stuck it down on either side and said, eh, that's kind of tight. Then we decided we we're going to have to plane it. So what happens? No matter how many times you measure, it doesn't take much with the drawer to be off. So what happens when I plane this drawer, this side? meant the back is now extended beyond the, the side, so this piece had to be cut back down the size too. Luckily we were, we were planing the, the flat-faced uh, cut, so it wasn't any problem cutting this, and everything right. still fit together just fine. But that means we have to modify the, the drawing, I mean the work, final work. But what Larry's saying, and then we, then we put the drawer slides in, we're all like, okay, we're almost done now, we're on a roll. And we put it in there, but now it was too loose. So it wasn't rolling right. Then that's when we figured, okay, every place we put a screw in, we had to put a little flat washer behind. Not much, just a little flat washer, three on each side. So going on to the second drawer, this one was <coughs> easier to put in because we used these nice Craig, Craig fixtures that clamp here at the right level and then support the, the drawer slide. I don't know if y'all can see that. This clamps to the side of the cabinet. Drawer slide fits right there on the top. We put a level across both of them to make sure they're the same height. Measure it from the bottom to here and from the top to here. Make sure it's in the same height. Here, pass those around. See how that works? There's a left and a right. Yeah, it's a lot easier. And then we could figure out the spacing on the drawers better. So here we are doing that with these. <coughs> with these uh, Craig's tools. Okay, so we put that drawer in, then we came up. If you look at this drawer, you might see, can you see that? Do I need to bring it to you? You might see some extra holes here. We, we mounted the drawer in, Zoom way put the top drawer in, and realized or thought about extra hole, extra hole. So we thought about the position of the drawer, and rather than move the slide on the cabinet, we had four inches here to play with, so we just raised the, uh, the rail, and that lowered the drawer. So when we were happy with the with the spacing, we uh, put the top drawer in. Okay. And here's what the cabinet looks like now. This was done yesterday at six o'clock. This cabinet has not been finished. Good reason. Um, did you bring the whiskey for we had that drinking contest? You every time somebody in the contest. We were going to do a thing where, we're, but you guys have been pretty good. We were going to take a drink every time somebody asked a stupid question. It was going to be iced tea. But, you know, Walt answered correctly on the splines right off the bat. Well, his comment about what this I didn't have to point that out, but we, were, we left that there intentionally so you know what we did, and we'll go back and fill it. I have a good question for you. Yes. Based on uh, <coughs> materials and, and labor, what's the retail price on something like that? Well, about 22,000. That's kind of what I figured. Um, we're working for food at Rob's place, <laughs> uh, which is about 35, 40 cents an hour. If I was going ahead yeah. and charging my usual $60. Indentured servants. <laughs> if I was going to charge my usual 60 to $80 an hour rate, um, we'd get discussed. We, we roughly have, would you say we have 40 man out? No, we have 
Way more than that. Almost 120 million hours of this mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. <coughs> but, you know, a lot of it's, you know, redoing stuff. Here's what, here's what the original cart looked like. Now, this original cart, Rob had uh, a wood shop magazine come over in Navy. <coughs> they loved that cart. They thought that was fascinating. Didn't they, Rob? Yeah, that, that was a wood magazine. Wood magazine. Yeah, if after we had uh, built the shop, pretty well outfitted it and so forth, they were over there walking through the thing, taking pictures and so forth. They came around to spotting this thing underneath the table saw. They rolled that thing out and spent about the next five hours <laughs> photographing this thing. <laughs> okay, that's the end. Are there any questions? Some of you guys have probably seen these before, but this is a Larry thing. But this is a, these are push blocks that you can, you know, if you cut them with the saw, you don't care. Because when it, later on, it's a dovetail joint, you slide the handle out, you make a new piece. It could be skinnier, it could be wider, it could be anything. Multi-purpose. Yes, is there any major thing that next time you build one of these, you would do it differently? Yes. The as I said earlier, these blind deals here. I think we did a good job of hiding it under the rail, but you will we'll see some bleed through. Also, if you want to get really picky and flattening out these, you'll see that there's a little more gap in the top than there should be. It's not perfect, but it's close. So, sanding is not the way to fix finish uh, precision work. You need something a little, a little more accurate. So, I would make them oversize and route them down. There's yeah. always, you they're know, there's a numerous they, ways you can do this. One cuts in and the other out, but splines work out quick and easy and work that work we'd used them before. We, we were able to put this carcass together and take it apart several times before we actually said, okay, we're going to glue it this time. And it would just stand there. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. Yeah. Thank you.